So welcome to this tutorial. So this is the continuation part of the part two. Okay, here we are discussing the final part of test ng Q and A. This is the most advanced question. Okay, that are being asked in the interview. And if you can have you no know, uh, good answers to them, then you will be having a good impression on the interviewer. So let's quickly start on it. Okay. So first question is, what is test ng failed XML? Test ng failed XML, it's a XML that gets generated by test ng if in the execution one or multiple tests gets failed. Okay, it will be generated by the XML. What is the use of it? Through test ng failed XML, you can read on only the failed test case, right? Because this test ng failed XML will only contain the failed test case so that you can read on using that. Okay. Can we run the JUnit test case using testng? This is the next question. Yes, we can run JUnit test cases using testng XML file. Okay. In normal cases, we have to write we in testng XML file we write test tag name equal to test name, right? Test any text tag name you are giving, right? But here, if you want to rerun, not rerun, if you want to run JUnit test cases, you have to mention JUnit equal to true. That will be taken care of by testng itself from the error nodes. Okay, next question is how to run testng XML from a command prompt. You have to go to the directory and in the directory you have to write Java and there you have to write Java minus CP path of the testng jar. Okay, then path of the of your classes and again you have to mention org.testng.testng test class, testng basically class and the testng XML file name. Okay, next question is how can we rerun our failed test case programmatically? Suppose you have a test method. Okay, what you want to do? you want to retry your test method multiple time if it gets failed okay suppose once you the test method has run and if it is if it gets failed immediately after to that without any manual intervention the test method will be retrying means rerunning it so you can achieve it using an uh, interface using an interface called i retry analyzer okay you have to implement the interface itself and you have to use an attribute called retry analyzer along with the test method which you want to retry upon failures okay next question is how can we rerun our felt test ng test cases programmatically using test ng failed xml so here you have to create a object for test ng like test ng and test runner go to new test ng and you have to create a list where you have to add the path of the test ng failed xml generated by test ng itself once upon a failure of test cases test methods then you have to call a method set test suite and pass the list and you can run that so here i had shown only one example only i have taken only one xml file you can add multiple xml file like failed xml as data dot add you can keep on adding okay next question is what is like test ng supports yaml file or not okay suppose let's say instead of xml file can you write yaml file test ng can identify yeah, the answer is yes so this is the left hand side i had shown xml file right hand uh, side i had shown equivalent yaml file if you write both the cases test ng will be able to identify and trigger the execution okay so here suite name smoke suite here it will be like name equal to smoke suite thread count equal to 2 here it will be thread count equal to 2 like this and now next question is what is data provider and what is what the what is the use of it so data provider is a concept provided by test ng suppose you have a test method and you want to run it with thousand different data set so you can introduce data provider okay it's a two step process one is you have to define a data provider method with the provider name here the annotation at the data provider and the same data provider method you have to consume in the test method like the way i had done that okay correct so that's how it is so that you can get the data one by another together right so the return type of the data provider method is object okay what is invocation count invocation count is an attribute when we use that suppose i want to run a test method multiple times then we mention the number of time i want to rerun or execute i want to execute my test method so test one 
is a method i am mentioning invocation count equal to 3 that means test 1 will be executed thrice okay what is thread pool size thread pool size is an another attribute okay which provides you through which you can you can uh, provide multiple threads to use to run the specific test so here test 1 i had given invocation count equal to 3 that means three time it will run and thread pool size equal to 2 that means this test 1 method test method will be executed thrice using two parallel threads okay now what is the difference between at that factory and at that data provider data provider references individual test methods means you can rerun one test case with multiple test data the same thing if you are going with test classes so at that factory will be used and it will be applicable to all the test methods okay what is listeners listener is a concept which basically in a uh, in a very generalized way it listens to something and perform to some specific actions so basically we use listeners to manipulate runtime uh, details or runtime data manipulation or runtime behavior so test ng in test ng there are multiple listeners available so i had listed it, it down i annotation transformer i hookable i, I reporter I, I to i test listener like this okay so these are very important or advanced feature of test one just ng so let's run for an example i annotation transformer so using th this interface using this interface you can implement the interface and you can change your behavior of the annotations okay i test listener you can you can perform some specific set of actions in the runtime depending on some specific conditions using i test listener okay same like i reporter and other listeners as well okay and how can you add the listeners in the uh, uh, test and external file in the test and external file you have to write the tags and you can mention the listener class which is what you are implementing it basically right and how to manipulate next question is how to manipulate annotations or attributes using i annotation transformer I, as i was mentioning right so here i have put some condition public void is sustainable so here what i'm trying to achieve i am just intentionally disabling one test method okay so if the test method name is test demo so this is not uh, very uh, this is a very basic example actually to you can tell them in interview as well okay so suppose if the test method name is test uh, demo it will return true to this method called transform you have to implement a method okay called transform which is an unimplemented of method of i annotation transformer okay to, to transform any annotations so here if you return true so annotation dot set attribute will be false by default it will be true and if you make it false so the test test should not be run for this test name so like this way you can manipulate other annotations as well so that's all from this section guys so if you like my video and if you if you feel like it helped you please do share like and subscribe to my channel if you have any questions comments and suggestions please put them in the comment box i'll be happy to help Thank you and have a nice day.